kids, Heidi here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate you tuning in. I have just a quick little haul today, but it's got some special things in it and something I wanted to talk to you about. So I went away for the weekend with my two daughters. We have an annual girls weekend and uh, no, we don't go to see Chippendales or anything like that. We like to do a big Target shop and a find a great restaurant with some good drinks and sit on our hotel room beds and chat. And we just run around whatever town we picked and have fun. And the last few years, they my girls have been so kind, they let me squeeze in a quick trip to a thrift store. And so we did that and I didn't want to you know burden them with too much time. It was um, on the camp, near the campus of um, Michigan State University. So I knew that I could find anything from worn out t-shirts from a college student to, um, you know, professor's wardrobes or anything in between, right? So I had a really good time, but I tried to be strategic. So what I'd like to hear from you is when you have limited time, what do you hit first? Or how do you change how you search? Because I'm somebody that if I have enough time, I like to go hanger by hanger by hanger. So, and I was, if I don't have enough time, I don't go to shoes. So I just want to show you, it's just a kind of a weird random mix of stuff, but I wanted to focus on um, coats and jackets for both men and women, because, you know, winter, and my coat closet, I cleaned it out and sold a bunch of stuff, and now I need more. So coats and jackets for men and women. I took a stroll. I hope they have a, would have a sweater section, but they didn't. It was all just long sleeve section. So I just walked quickly through there looking for something that stood out. I wasn't going to go hanger by hanger in the tops. Then I went over to purses because they're pretty quick to to look for quality, right? I'm not going to go. And in this store, did I miss great stuff? I'm sure of it. But I found great stuff in the limited time I had. So then I went to men's coats and jackets. I looked at purses. I looked at hats. And I looked at linens. So let me show you what I got. So the first thing I found, oh, it's inside out. Heidi, let me turn it right side out. So this was in the women's coats and jackets, but I can see why they thought it was a jacket because it is the bulkiest, heaviest cardigan sweater you can imagine. But it's not a woman's, it's a men's. It has a lot of pills, but I enjoy sweater shaving. And then I'm gonna run it through my dryer um, with one of those dry clean cloths just to freshen it up. So let me show it to you. Oh, you probably want to see. Why am I not prepared? Well, because life is kind of crazy right now. And when it gets back to normal, there's no normal, I will be in much better condition. So here it's a hoodie. So can we just get that out of the way? And the hoodie is like a waffle or a basket weave, okay? And then the sweater has a mixture of stockinette stitch and that waffle stitch. And it has toggles for buttons. And it has big patch pockets. This is a men's large, but it's big. And the best, the piece de resistance, as they say, patches on the sleeves that are like wool tweed. And the brand is J. Peterman. So if you're a fan of Seinfeld, you've heard of Peterman, but very high quality, expensive clothes. So as soon as I get this bad boy all shaved up and freshened up, I don't know, I'm gonna list it for like 75. What do you think? So then that's all I found in the women's coats was a man's sweater. So then I went to the men's coats and jackets and that was a mixture of sports coats, suit coats, outdoor coats, windbreakers, I found a Cotopaxi windbreaker, just a, the thinnest wind shirt you can imagine. And they had it marked up to $16.99. And I went, hmm, that's too bad. Cause I, I just don't, I don't, I, I did the comps and I might've been able to get 30, 35 for it. And then fees and I promote and no, not enough, not enough money there for me. I passed on the Cotopaxi and then two hangers down, I found this little neckline staring at me. Arcteryx. Some people say Arcteryx. Whatever you say, 
Look for it. It's an awesome brand. I've only found, uh, I found a couple women's tank tops and they sold for like 25 for a tank top. And then I found a women's jacket and it was Gore-Tex and it had all the water sealed seams like rain could not get in. And that sold for $212 and I paid like $6.99. This is a men's um, Gore-Tex, not Gore-Tex, men's Arctrix jacket. And I forget what it's called, but I did find the style name. There's the logo on the front and the name. It's got a little packet. Now the current the current style of this jacket, same name, same all the same features. It just doesn't have that sleeve um, pocket anymore. So it's um, a few years old, but nobody cares when it comes to this brand. So here's the issue. And I paid $8.99 for it. So here is the issue. There, it's got a drawstring hem with these little toggle cords. And on both sides, the dude that owned this jacket had pulled out, had pulled the hem off. And I've started fixing it. So this was loose like this all the way to about here. And then the, the nylon, the seam binding, this hem tape was all frayed. And the other side was just like that. So it's not perfect, but I don't care. I have fixed it with fabric glue and trim and scissors and being very careful. And I think it looks pretty good compared to what it looked like before. I'm gonna put up a photo to show you what it looked like when it was all frayed. So I have to glue this down and then I'm gonna list this jacket for about $150, even after it's being repaired. Yay. I told you this was a fun trip trip. Then, I turned the corner into a different size, but still in the men's jackets, and I found this, Burberry's. So this with the, um, with the S on the end and the um, like single quotes uh, around each end is probably, and this was made in USA by Hickey Freeman. Hickey Freeman is a wonderful suit company and they made, were making Burberry stuff in the USA probably in the 90s, but it's a tiny houndstooth. Can you see that? A tiny houndstooth. And the style, of course, because it's Burberry, is still very much a classic. It's not, it does not look dated. It's a two button, 100% wool, herringbone sport coat. The only thing is, I don't know the size. I think it's a 38 regular. And here's how I'm going about that. I'm taking a whole bunch of measurements and then um, I'm going into listings where people do have a size tag, and then I'm looking at their measurements. And this measures out to a 38 regular. You have to stay in the same brand because everybody's measured differently. Most of the time when you measure the underarm on a suit jacket from, from side to side with the sleeves up, so you lay it flat, put the sleeves up and you measure across. If you um, deduct four inches, that's the size. So measure across, double it, then deduct four, and that's what you'd call it. So a 42 would probably measure 46 across or 23 across, okay? Not always though. Some brands are tailored very tight and some brands are tailored to be roomy for the older gentleman who needs more roominess. But this measures as a 38 regular and I'm gonna verify that one more time. And I have no idea what I'm gonna list it for, maybe 125? but it's a classic herringbone roll Burberry jacket. So, then I wandered over to the corner where the purses and other accessories were, and I found this cute leather bag, and I thought, ooh, that looks good. Come out here. This has been all shined up. It was covered with dust. It was scuffy. Um, I just used um, a damp, uh, I used a diaper, a diaper. I used a baby wipe on it to get the dust off, and then I used um, I used Wonder Balsam, but isn't it cute? Has one pocket on the back, has a zip top, and a hanging pocket inside. There's a towel in there now. One zipper pocket inside. But the brand, I'll take the towel out so you can see the brand, is Porsche. Let's see if we can get this right up there. Come on. No, it's metal plaque. Okay, P-O-U-R, 
C-H-E-T, made in France. Okay, Porsche. Some of them are vintage, but they still make bags, so I'm not going to declare mine to be vintage. But it is a classic style. It's probably not vintage because it's a crossbody. If it were a vintage, it would be either be a shoulder, shoulder strap or a handbag. But isn't it? I think it's just a cute classic, and the leather is beautiful. So I got this for $4.99. I strolled a little more in that section, and these were hanging with belts. So this is a pair of men's suspenders. What you want to look for on suspenders, just to be quick about it, is leather here, not vinyl, and leather here, not, you know, pleather. If you see those, you won't find a name brand or anything else. So you want leather fasteners for the buttons and, well, buttons, first of all, not clips. And then you want the leather um, section right here. And then you can usually find a name. Let's see if I can get this lined up right. So you can see it, it's very faint, it's coach. So these straps are actually silk and these are probably vintage. So I have a pair of men's silk coach suspenders and I'm gonna list those for 35 and I paid $2.99. So that's fun, I've sold probably, I think I've sold all the suspenders I've ever found but I'm really picky and I always run comps. So in that, right around that area, were some scarves, and now I'm looking for the really nice ones that look kind of like blankets, <laughs> you know, a really beautiful fall plaid or stripe or something like that. But I also enjoy it when I find pashmina, which is a type of cashmere. This is um, branded pashmina, but it's 55% pashmina, which is cashmere, and 45% silk. So it is very soft and it's a little thinner and has a more of a silky drape than just plain cashmere wood. But here's what caught my eye. I mean, I would have gotten it no matter the pattern probably because I've sold all the pashminas I find. Look at the horse motif. It's got um, prancing, dancing horses and horseshoes and of course some great fringe. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna list that. I usually sell my pashminas around 25. I think I'm going to go maybe 38 with this because of the interesting motif. Then I also in the accessories, I saw this cute beret and I thought, oh, that's a cute beret. And it has this little knot here. And one side is a loop like a bow. And the other side is a little fringed, um, a little fringed end on it. And so this that would sit off to like right here to, off to the side. And I picked it up and I thought, oh, that feels like leather. Yes, indeed, this is all leather. And when I looked inside, I found this wonderful tag. It's Dashette, designed by Hilary Dash. Dash, Dash, I don't know, Dashé, who knows? But Dashettes is the, is the vintage brand of this beautiful hat. What do you think? Isn't it cute? I would put it on, but I look so stupid in hats like this. So just adorable, beautiful condition, no dirt on it. I mean, look at that leather. Oh, it's gorgeous. I paid $2.99 and I think I'm gonna list it for about 60. We'll see some hat collector. And then lastly, up on top of a rack with a whole bunch of ugly pillows from 1988, I saw this. This is from the designer whose name I can't remember, whose website is Jungalo, J-U-N-G-A-L-O-W. And this same pillow, she markets it as her design, but several other websites sell it too. But it's called the Primavera, I think. I don't know. I'll put the name up right here. But it, this is wool, um, loop kind of like um, a rug would be made. See the loops? And it's got those adorable flowers with the little tassels that form the flowers. And it's got a lovely cotton back with a zip. And I'm gonna see what quality the pillow is. If it's a quality pillow, I'll sell it together. If it is um, not a quality pillow, I will sell just the cover. Because sometimes people like to use their own covers. I'm sorry, fill their own um, pillow forms 
because they know they're new and fresh and clean. Okay, so what do you think of that? I'm gonna list this for about 45. I think the retail is probably around 100. I just thought it was adorable. Actually, I just took away all my sofa pillows because I was tired of them and wanted something new and this would be adorable for the fall, but I'm gonna sell it. So that's my quick little random mix of things. What's your strategy when you have limited time in the thrift store? I know some of you are gonna say you go straight for the shoes and that's where you stay, but I like to just look at things that I can look at quickly. Like the linens, you can just go through them quickly. You don't have to look at every single item. If you see something that's beautiful, then you'd check the comps. Same with hats, same with scarves, same with purses. Coats, they're easy to spot. And, uh, you know, most of the time they're from Old Navy or Target, but sometimes you find a Burberry or an Arcturix. I had a great time and I promise you'll see more videos from me soon. Please like and subscribe because we're getting super close to being relevant. I had a great time. Bye, kids.